League of Legends isn't like most other online games. Holy shit! What is that script? While other titles will usually become more susceptible to cheaters the longer the game has been out. Look at that, bro. How, how, how? You can just tell he's looking through walls of It seems despite League being one of the most popular games in the world and over a decade old, it's managed to dodge the eruption of hacking that will affect other games of its size. Or at least that's what they want you to think. So let's begin. But first, let's visit the company that's paying my bills this month. Let's see if you can guess it. It's available on mobile and PC, there's over 800 champions, and it's got PvP and PvE content. Of course, it's... Oh, I have to keep talking about it. So they're currently celebrating 5 million monthly players and their 5 year anniversary with some brand new content. If you already do play and enjoy this game, I hooked you guys up and you can use my QR code for $100 worth of content for free, including Lady Atessa, 500k silver, and more. After you hit level 25, you'll also get an additional 500k silver, epic skill tomes, potions, and so on. And if you download using my link, you can use the code FESTIVAL5 to get another epic champion, Tayrell, 500k silver, and more. They've also recently added Live Arena, a mode that you might be familiar with if you've played League. It's a 4v4 fight to the death after you pick and ban your champions. And Curse City, one of Raid's biggest features since Doom Tower, with 100 stages to complete, including stages where you'll need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. There's also a party happening where Raid is celebrating its fifth anniversary with the Festival of Creation, a month-long party with events, tournaments, summon boosts, free gifts, and more. So if you want to join in the celebrations, make sure to use my link down below to hook yourself up with all the freebies. You can also find me in-game here, and if you want, you can also join my clan. So, to check out Raid, make sure to click the link in the description down below. The first hack, or cheat, or script, or whatever you want to call it, is the one that flies under the radar the most. And the reason I'm telling you about this first is because Vanguard, Raid's new anti-cheat that's coming soon, is meant to fix all of these, but it doesn't work here. So, let's dive into what it really is. I actually managed to get the source code for one of these and I was kind of surprised by how simple it really was. More on that in a minute. You may have even come across this in one of your games before but not realised it. A lobby crasher will essentially do exactly what the name says. If you don't like the look of your lobby for whatever reason, you can use this tool and when the countdown hits zero, the lobby will crash. How does this work though, and more importantly, why are people speculating that this is going to bypass Vanguard? To understand, we need to dig a bit deeper. The League of Legends client is, essentially, a glorified Google Chrome window. Obviously, this is an extremely blunt way to explain it, but in essence, that's genuinely what it is. League is also fairly unique in the sense that it has two separate instances, one for the actual client and another for when the game starts. It's not like one of their newer titles, like Valorant, where the game and the client are baked into one. And this really is just a reflection of how old the game is. Some parts of it are just going to be limited by the technology that was available at the time. So, because the client is essentially just hosting a website, people quickly figured out that if you know where to look, you can also do things that you can do on websites. Such as... Now, if you're thinking this seems really insecure, I wouldn't blame you, but in Riot's defense, there are a few security precautions put in place to help the player out. Even though we now know that the League client is just rendering a web page, it's still hosted on your local PC, which stops anyone from jumping into your session. You also have a unique session password that is randomized on launch, which is really good to stop attacks from other people. However, if you're the person who wants to see the information, you kind of have free reign. For example, some of the information that you can interrupt include, but aren't limited to, a player a player's profile, a player's match history, notifications, a summoner's inventory, friends and conversations, in-depth information about the client, there's even a tracker to log how long a player will spend on the home screen. Now, all of this leads to some really interesting scenarios where you can inject custom code into the client where you can alter basically anything that you can think of. Custom level, custom summoner name, which to be fair was a bit more powerful before Riot ended up giving that to everyone anyway. You can even inject automatic rune and champion choices into the game, which coincidentally is how a lot of those third party apps work. You know, the ones where you forget they're installed on your PC and then all of a sudden you're playing Zed mid with Aftershock because it decided to pick the worst runes possible and not tell you. Even custom rank works. You can make yourself appear as though you're a challenger player. This won't cue you into a challenger game, but it is important to understand how all of this works to know how the lobby crash exploit works. All it takes to crash the lobby is to force the player into a custom match. <laughs> yep, that's it. Obviously, you can't normally join a custom match while you're in the pre-game lobby, but by sending a request directly to the 
server, you can bypass this. So when the countdown reaches zero, the lobby crashes and the player is put into a custom game where they can just leave. Because the nature of this exploit is just using the tools that are already in the client, it's unrealistic for anti-cheats, including Vanguard, to target this sort of behavior. But by the same logic and given how simple this exploit seems, it wouldn't be too hard for Riot to fix it. Which does make me feel that now they're cracking down on this sort of behavior, it might be fixed separately alongside the release of Vanguard. Name revealers work in a similar way. All of the information for players in the lobby is available behind the scenes. If you're a new player, you might not know this, but around a year and a half ago, Riot made a change that you can't see players' names in Champion Select anymore, and they switched it to the anonymous version that we have today. Holy shit, that was really over a year ago. If you're trying really hard to climb, dodging can be a legitimate strategy, seeing as you probably don't want the talent one trick trying to play Fizz in your ranked games. So if you see his name in Champ Select hovering Fizz, you better fucking dodge. But with all of that being said, all of these exploits or hacks so far have still been relatively tame. If your lobby is crashed or your name is revealed in Champ Select, it really isn't the end of the world. However, there is a much more sinister way that all of this information can be used. Drop hacking was a method of hacking that was far more prevalent in the early days of League. However, a variation of this has recently come back into the spotlight, which we'll get into shortly. In layman's terms, a drop hack will just delete the current game from existence. However, unlike a lobby crasher, which all takes place before the game, a drop hack will take place during the game. Meaning that if the user has decided at any point the game was unwinnable, they could just Thanos snap it out of existence. This was a big problem for a lot of reasons. Ladder integrity could be completely compromised, and on top of that, it really just exposed a big security flaw in Riot's systems. In fact, it got so bad that Riot actually had to make a statement on the matter. This has since been deleted, but thankfully we can still access it through the internet archive. Quote, we have seen a resurgence of drop hacks recently across all League of Legends servers worldwide. A drop hack essentially results in a small subset of players facing the attempting to reconnect message while playing their games, with a possibility of the game never finishing or disappearing from one's match history entirely. Simultaneously, we kicked off suspension proceedings against all accounts involved in drop hacking, past or present. Similar to last year's ban waves, we won't be showing any mercy and all corroborated accounts will be permanently banned. No warnings or two-week suspensions, just a pure and simple account closure. We are confident in our ability to detect offenders and aim to decisively punish offenders. We don't expect the ban waves to immediately reduce this trend, however. The decision to perpetrate drop hacks has more to do with personal attitude, one's ethical standards, and a personal respect for rules and other players. In Europe, we've already rolled out a number of reinforced permanent bans, i.e. legal prohibition of accessing any of our services under the penalty of prosecution, and if we notice the same people repeatedly displaying extreme toxicity or antisocial behaviour, we'll expand this group further. We hope to deploy the fix soon, and thank you for your patience while we've taken measures to address this issue. When a player got hit with a drop hack, it would be like the game never existed at all. In-game, all they'd see is attempting to reconnect, and when they checked their match history, there was no trace that it ever existed. Match history... There we go, it's not even there. Fuck you, square firecrack. This was likely due to Riot's system at the time, realising that if all 10 players disconnected from the server, then there was no point in keeping the game running. What Scumbag is doing is he is... he um, stopped drop hacking for minutes to check if the entire any team had disconnected. Uh, this let us push a tower, and then he's gone back to drop hacking. Beneath a drop hack, though, is something that's more commonly known as a DDoS attack. In extremely blunt terms, the hacker will discover the IP address of the server that the game is being run on, and then send an extremely large amount of data to the server, overwhelming it and causing it to be shut down. This is similar to what happens when tickets for a really popular artist go on sale, and because everyone's trying to buy them at the same time, the website crashes. Just like when I tried to go see Taylor Swift- <coughs> Metallica, I'd go to see Metallica, I'm a man. In recent years, however, DDoS attacks have fallen out of fashion due to security standards getting higher. Services such as Cloudflare helping to mask IP addresses, and games being hosted on dedicated servers rather than on peer-to-peer -peer networks have done a lot to help safeguard this. But what happens if a hacker can still get a hold of an important IP address? Hmm, I wonder. Last weekend, a suspected DDoS attack brought the LCK to its knees and caused a series to go on for seven hours. Just recently, the LCK has been hit with a massive influx of DDoS attacks, causing the games to stop completely. LCK live game broadcasts have now been cancelled. And there is actually a lot of conspiracies surrounding this whole situation. Starting a couple of months ago, Korean players specifically started getting hit by what seemed to be targeted DDoS attacks. 
The most popular theory in Korea surrounding this, according to Ashley Kang, is that the recent change to using Riot IDs instead of summoner names opened a breach in security that allowed bad actors to get the IP addresses of players. The fact that this has been going on for months before it even affected the LCK does make it seem like Riot Korea weren't really taking this seriously and now it's led up to the situation that they're currently in. Kim Min Kyo, a Korean streamer, even switched over to the Chinese server in order to stop being DDoSed after not being able to play solo queue for weeks. Leading up to this extreme response, he tried changing his internet provider and after that didn't work, he even tried changing apartments. Which means that whatever the exploit that's being used to grab IP addresses from games is still active. After switching to the Chinese server, however, all of this mysteriously stopped. Of course, being on the Korean server, one of the biggest targets of this has been Faker, who had to resort to playing Jump King on stream since he couldn't get into a solo queue game without being hit offline. Even though all of this has been ignored for months by Riot Korea, they've now been forced to act after the attacks escalated from targeting streamers to targeting the LCK itself. After one of the worst days last week, where a series was delayed for 7 hours, they made the decision to postpone the match, seeing as they couldn't find a fix for the persistent DDoS attacks. Afterward, they released this statement. The LCK must unfortunately turn to pre-recorded matches for the remainder of this week in order to reduce the influence of the continuous DDoS attacks. Ticket holders for these matches will receive a full refund and ticket sales will be suspended until further notice. We will do our best to allow fans to return to the live audience. It is fairly confusing that after the Korean players switched to the Chinese server, the attack stopped. This could be because the Chinese client is fairly different from the rest of the world and sometimes will receive delayed patches. You may have noticed this if you've ever tried to search a Chinese player on a stat website like OPGG and realized that you just couldn't. If this is the case, this also means that the exploit could be found and used on Western servers like EU or NA since it would be strange for an exploit to only be available on one server unless they were running a different version of the client. It also brought light to the fact that games like this are only susceptible to DDoS attacks in the first place due to them not actually being played on true LAN. Even though all the players are in the same location, they're still connecting to an online server that can be affected by outside influences. Given that we're in 2024 and Riot is a billion dollar company, it seems strange that this isn't a feature that's been implemented yet. But let's put a pause on that for a second and talk about something that will actually be impacted by Vanguard, scripting. As far as actual hacking goes, scripting is the closest thing that we have in League. And you can see he's got a line on all of the enemies you can a see. A third party program reads inputs from other players and automatically reacts to them. This can be anything from automatically dodging or predicting enemy skill shots, automatically calculating how much damage a combo will do, automatically last hitting or tracking enemy cooldowns, amongst much more. This also extends to some more game breaking issues like Scion being able to drift like Vin Diesel on cocaine. I was like, okay. I was like, okay. Or Rek'Sai being able to one-shot anything on the map, no matter how strong she is. Although this is an issue that's been around since League's inception, it got visibly worse over the last year after Riot was hacked and their source code was put up for sale for $1 million. This was later confirmed to be a social engineering attack and no malware was even used. If you're unaware of what social engineering is, basically, instead of exploiting poor security within the system itself, the hacker will instead target employees who, usually, due to a lack of training, won't properly follow security protocols, which can lead to unsafe files being downloaded onto official Riot systems. Riot themselves did respond and say that this incident severely impacted their ability to deal with cheaters. And since this incident, scripting, especially in high elo, has been something that's going mostly unpunished by Riot. However, with the introduction of Vanguard, it'll be interesting to see how this changes. In theory, it should eliminate scripting entirely, but over on Valorant, where Vanguard has been a part of the game since it started, people have still found ways to break through, albeit these do seem to last for a much shorter time before being detected. There has been a lot of speculation about how Vanguard is going to work with League. For disclosure, I wanted to do a whole section here where I download Vanguard, test it out with League, and see how it goes for everyone who didn't want it on their PCs. Or for the people who were, at the very least, unsure about it, given how it's truly been a divisive topic since it was announced. To the point where a lot of people are discussing whether or not it's actually going to make them quit the game entirely. So, I went and made an account on the Filipino server since that's where it was supposedly meant to be released first. I logged on and was greeted with this screen, and even had to play through the whole tutorial, but for whatever reason it didn't seem to actually be activated. 
expected, despite the patch notes stating that it was meant to hit the Philippines in patch 14.5. So I started trolling through Reddit and Twitter looking for an answer, and it turns out that it just didn't end up happening. From this writer's Twitter, Apologies on the confusion with this week's patch notes. We wrote that Vanguard would be going live in the Philippines with patch 14.5, but that's just not true yet. <laughs> There was a date change that was missed and that's totally my fault. Working on removing this for all regions. Anyway, I did still want to include that section in the video, but after waiting for almost two weeks, it's still getting delayed, so I think that's a video for another time. As always, a big thank you to all of you for watching and to all of my patrons for your support. If you want to see a more in-depth look at how Vanguard works, you can click the video that's hopefully popped up on your screen about now. And another thank you to Raid Shadow Legends, make sure to hit the link below to check them out.